Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about how to create the handy helper hammer. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys some new techniques about how to create multiple parts in um, one part studio and then take those parts over to the assembly to finish that product up. Okay, so stay tuned and more will be coming. Remember to start in your own folder when you create new documents, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to call this the handy So the first thing we're going to start with is the handle, okay, which is the metal part that everything else attaches to. So it just makes logical sense to begin with that. So we're going to make the graph paper here and we basically want to start off with just two lines that are longer than we need, okay, for the graph paper. And we're going to make both of these lines construction lines. And construction lines are found right up here and construction lines are like great being able to see things, um, but they won't like get extruded. They won't get in the way of extruding things later on and it makes things a lot better. Um, so. This is like a great way to lay something out, but without actually like having it affect our model later on. We're going to use the linear pattern tool, which honestly, the linear pattern tool in this program is one of my least favorite parts about the program. Um, when we look at it, it basically has a couple different bits of information. Basically, vertically right now, it's only making one instance of this one thing. And that's actually what we, we, we want it to go vertically, this line, so that it can come down. Um, it's coming over three times. So we don't want this to come over at all in this case. So double click on this and change that to a one and hit enter. Then double click on this one. And I think coming down, we're going to make like eight of these things. We're going to hit eight and we're going to hit enter. Right now you can see that there's like eight lines being populated upwards, each is an inch away. So we need to change that dimension to be 0.25 and we need to flip the direction of those things around. And I have eight, but it would seem that I need less than that, maybe like six. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, oops, I did not mean to finish that. So now we need to do like the exact same thing for the other line, right? But you have to do it separately. You can't do it at the same time. You can select this line now 
Now we do want this line to go to the right. We want this line to go to the right maybe like 12 times, and we want this line to go to the right maybe uh, at, at 0.25 inches. Okay, so again, let's set 12, enter. Okay, and that's gonna produce lines all the way to the end here, which is cool. So it, you can see like this little checkpoint, the screen checkpoint, just click anywhere and it'll be done. Okay, click anywhere like outside of your work. And now because this thing is not attached, we can move this thing around, you know? And the reality is, is that when you look at the drawing, there's like a graph box that's going like just kind of below the edge of the tip. Okay, so as you go to create the tip of this thing, A, the tip starts back um, at like, 2.75 inches, no, uh, is that right? 1.75 inches from the end. So come back, or actually, let's just start drawing a line um, from this corner to the front edge, okay? And this is gonna make like our screwdriver portion. And when I dimension this from here to here, it is gonna be 1.75 inches. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the graph paper and I'm just roughly copying what is on this graph paper on my drawing, okay? And um, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? As a matter of fact, I'd almost rather you go kind of quick with it to look good, but it doesn't have to, you know, don't spend two days like working on this one little part. It's just not worth the time. So, um, Go through it, like that thing comes back, what? Um, from... This one comes back one, two, and almost a little bit and like half. So there's like one, two, and then it comes back a little bit more than a half. This. Actually, the whole thing needs to slide up some. So I'm going to slide this part up some. Slide this part up some. Yeah, that, that's starting to look better there. And then I need to put a three-point arc in. That arc is going to end somewhat like down here. And that thing's going to come up. And actually, I think it comes out. Right? And again, I can... Oops, I did not mean to grab both those things. Um, let's try that arc again. Now that looks pretty decent. That comes around to like this hook kind of thing. And that's going to look something like that. And then that hook thing is going to come around. And then that is also going to end at that like 1.75 inch spot at an angle. Okay, so bring this back over to like here. And we are going to dimension between here and here at 1.75. Okay, now the important thing here is that it's actually everything else that we want to erase, not what we just drew. So you need to draw the like lines to go around this thing. Okay, so we have these closed objects that we can cut away. And you do need to make sure that everything is like touching, there's no gaps, otherwise it won't. Okay. When we sh hit Shift and E now, I can select this object, and I can select like this object, and I can cut. All right. Next thing we need to put the taper on that now. When you go to create the taper, because I actually have this thing slanted downward in the front, um, you can't draw your taper on that angle. Draw the taper on the flat area above that angle, okay? So create a sketch on the flat area 
then we're still working over here. So let me show you guys something new today. It's called the um, use button and we can grab this and we can use what's below as a like sketching plane, right? You can see that that thing is actually above that slant, uh, but we can use that as a sketching plane. And we're going to need to have two slopes. And the distance between these two pieces here is 0 0.046. And that means, I think they're all 0 0.046. Maybe not. Okay, so we want this number. This number is gray up here, right? Because it can't be edited, but we want that number and that number to match. So, what is it like? 0 4. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty close, okay? It's actually, if I did the math, 125 or like 0.125 minus 0 0.046 is actually 0 0.0395. That's the halfway point. Okay, and that puts this thing like directly in the center. And again, we use that um, grab the use thing. So now I've got this point where I have a closed object over here and I have a closed object over here. And I can remove that stuff away and I can add that taper at the end of the screwdriver. Okay, so let's turn off all of our planes. And let's continue to work. So I guess the next thing I have to do is my grip, right? And I, I've learned some new stuff about this program. We can actually create like parts, new parts within the same document. Okay, so we don't necessarily need to create new part um, documents, although it's helpful, but you don't have to. You can say, okay, this is 3.5 inches long. This is for the grip. Um, and it's this wide. I also want to use, so I'm gonna grab that use tool again. I wanna use this hole and this hole. Like we already have that geometry, so we don't need to redo it again. Grab those holes. And this thing comes out, the grip is 0.25 inches thick. Ooh, and see, so let me show you what just happened there. So I've just added that grip onto this object, but that is not what I want to do. Um, I need it to be a new part. See, we have just one part here right now. So I'm going to go back to extrusion four. I'm going to open that up again, and I'm going to change this so that it's a new part versus adding it to the part. Now we have part one, which I can rename as my handle. And I have part two, which I can on highlight handle. I can uh, rename this and call this my grip. So for the grip, we need to use a chamfer tool. Chamfer's up here. We're gonna use not an equal distance, but a two distance chamfer tool. Distance one is gonna be 0.25. Distance two is gonna be 0.125. I have this here, this here, here, and this here. Right, give that a check. Okay, so that puts the chamfer in there. Do not create a new one for the back. Only create one for right now, okay? We're gonna assemble these later on and you'll create multiple instances of this thing. Do not create a second one. It does not make things easier. It just makes things harder. Let's change the appearance. This is supposed to be a walnut, so let's make it like a brown color. Um, the handle itself is supposed to be steel, so let's um, edit its appearance and make it like a dark gray. Um, then let's get started on our hammerhead. So for our hammerhead, our hammerhead actually starts off a quarter inch from like this object. So part of me would say like, just start it in a new part file. And then the other part of me says like, no, we can do it right here. So you can do whatever you want. A new part file might be the easiest way to go about this, but this is another way that we can do it. And you know, this way might be a tiny bit better. Uh, we can create a plane. And we need to create this plane so that it is not an inch off of that surface, but 0.25 inches off of that surface, right? Which is the very front of the hammerhead. So now we have this plane and we're gonna create a sketch on that plane. And 
and this is going to be where we start to draw the hammerhead itself. So the hammerhead, and again, let's use that use button because we kind of want that geometry a little bit here. And I'm going to start a rectangle above that. I'm going to come below that, right? So the overall length of this rectangle is three inches. And then the front to here is 1.125. Um, and it is 0.625 inches square in its like thickness. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. We're gonna click the check mark. We are going to extrude this thing. And again, this is a new part, right? So we're gonna say new. I'm gonna go around in the opposite direction. And again, it's 0.625 square. So it's gonna be 0.625 in that direction there. Uh, we don't wanna merge it. We want it again to be new. So again, I have part three, okay? And I'm gonna rename this as my hammerhead. Okay, so now I can start sketching on my hammerhead. And like we have a slot that gets cut in our hammerhead. And again, if I use this um, use geometry, I can like grab that and I can even like vertically align these two things together. No dimensioning necessary at that point. I can say shift and E and I need to cut this away. Okay, so this is where sometimes like doing this on the same spot becomes a bit of an issue. So we have merge scope. So merge scope means like, what do you want to do with this sketch? Because this sketch is technically touching two separate parts. So uh, on shape is not sure. It's touching both the hammerhead and it's touching the handle. So for the merge scope, we need to tell it that we want it only to edit the hammerhead itself. So I'm gonna select the hammerhead and now I'm gonna click check, and now it's only cut away from the hammerhead, not from the handle also. Okay, now I can sketch on like my side. Um, and that taper starts. Um, the taper goes all the way down to the bottom. It comes up here someplace. Uh, let's finish creating this like triangle because that's going to be the thing we cut out. And the uh, length of this line over here is supposed to be 1.125. Or like it says in the drawing, 1.875 from that direction. Which again, that is a driven dimension because it's just math. It's like what? 3 inches minus 1.125 is equal to that. So we click check and we click shift and E. And now we're going to remove this, you know? And here it doesn't really ask us what we need to merge it with because it's only touching one part. So it's kind of smart enough to know that that's like the only part that we need to tweak. And I have that completely backwards. So I'm gonna go back actually, cause it's not that that's the problem. This is hot that's the problem. So I'm gonna go back to sketch seven. Um, and I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna delete this, this, draw it instead over here. Shift and E. Uh, so yeah, see, so like, yeah, now I can reselect that, click the checkbox, boom. Okay, and then I need to make sure, what sketch do I still have on? Oh, that sketch. Turn off that sketch. I can also turn off my plane and that's pretty good there, All right? Let's re, uh, change our appearance to like another sort of gray. And I need to put holes in these and these holes go not only through the hammerhead, but they also merge through the handle as well. So we're going to do those at the same time. So I'm going to sketch on my hammerhead because it's the perfect thing out. I'm gonna put down my two points. I'm gonna to start to dimension. Always dimension, whether you use a circle or a point, always dimension to the center of a circle when you're telling it like how far away something is. It's not the edge of the circle, it's the center of the circle. Okay, and both of these are 0.1875 away from the edge.
And now I'm gonna create my hole. It doesn't matter if it's a hole or like an extrusion or whatever, this process is still basically gonna work. This hole is a one eighth of an inch in diameter. And then the question is like, again, what's the merge scope? Like, what do we wanna go through? And it's already started to make like an informed decision. And it says that it thinks that it needs to go through the handle and the hammer, which is correct. If we didn't want that to be the case, then we would say merge scope and we could like click an X on one of these, you know? And there, it just cuts the holes through the hammerhead, but not through the handle itself. If you want to add more to it, click on merge scope and then select a part and then it will add that to the merge scope. So I can cut both these holes at the exact same time, okay? And then lastly, we need our rivets, okay? And just like uh, the grip, we didn't make two of them. We're not gonna make two of each rivet either. We're gonna make one 16th inch rivet and one um, eighth inch rivet. So I'm gonna sketch. I'm just gonna use the geometry. And then I'm gonna say Shift and E. No, wrong button. Shift and E and I'm gonna select that thing and it's gonna go backwards, and the total thickness of this whole thing is 0 0.625. 0 0.625, we're gonna say that this is a new part, and click check. Okay, so there's our new part here. I'm gonna rename this Brass Rivet. Okay, and we're gonna change its color. And that'll be good. Don't put another one in there. Not necessary for right now. Um, let's create a new sketch up here. Let's use its geometry. And then let's shift an E. I'm gonna flip this around again. This pin is also 0 0.625 long. Um, check. And then this is gonna be renamed as a steel rivet. Okay, and that could remain like a, a gray of some sort, you know, so let's edit its appearance. Make it different than like what it's in right now. You know? So like it should be a different color than what's around it. But it's still a gray because it's steel. Okay, so those are five different parts. One, two, three, four, five. Now, despite the fact that they're put together like this in the assembly, you still need to assemble them. So let's open our assembly and let's insert and like we can insert the entire part studio. So we're gonna do that to begin with. But we also need another grip. So we're gonna add one of those. We need another steel rivet. We're gonna add one of those and we need a brass rivet. So we're gonna add one of those and then we're gonna click the checkbox. Bingo. So despite the fact that these things look like they are assembled, they are not, okay? They're just like these individual pieces. So we are going to fix our handle in place and we're going to start to like build these things together. Okay, so um, mate there, mate there, quick check. This thing here, um, We can like grab these handles and like rotate this thing around, you know? So you can rotate it 180 degrees, which does make things easier when you go to assemble. Um, so do that and then we can mate. Right, I always grab, try to grab like an edge first and then I come to the point to get that blue axis facing in the direction that I want it. Bingo. Okay, and then I go to mate, like let's say this thing. That's gonna get attached to there. Okay, and then it's just a matter of mating up my pins. So like mating from there to there. Mating from there to there. Mating from there to there. And mating from there to there. Okay, there's my finalized hammer, ready to be uh, moving on to the drawing stage at this point. Right? 
So, um, yeah, and if I grab these things, like, they don't move. It's pretty key. All right. So that's creating the parts and the assembly for this. Um, you need to make drawings for it as well. Look at my examples on the assignments.